In this video we're going to make three different orange variations. Uh, it's all going to be the same model, but they're going to be UV unwrapped in different ways to show different techniques. So for this example I have three different orange textures that we're going to use in different ways. So to begin we'll just create a sphere and there we go. This will be our orange model. Easy. Alright, I'm just going to drag it up so that way it's resting in the grid. And then I'll go ahead and assign my texture to it. So we'll select this, right click, assign new material. I'll go ahead and choose a blend. I'll name it orange tile matte. Then in the color channel, I'll plug in a file and then I'll browse. And the first one we'll do here is this seamless tile. So I'll hit six to make sure it shows up here. Um, and basically, if we take a look at that UV editor, UV, UV editor, um, my default UVs that a sphere comes with work pretty well with seamless textures. Basically, it's wrapping all the way around so the edges are meeting each other. And then up here at the top, we do have a bunch of little seams, but since it's all concentrated into one little spot, it doesn't look too bad. It's something that, you know, we can kind of be negligible. All right, now this texture looks okay, but it looks a little bit too zoomed in. So usually with seamless textures, it's a smaller piece of the texture, and then we want to repeat it so that way we can get more detail. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to my material, go to the color slot, and then up here we have a tab, place 2D texture, and this is where we could repeat it a few times. So we could maybe do, let's try 10 by 10. That's not bad. And that just repeats it. And so if we look up here at the pole, it's a little strange, but it's not too bad. It's pretty small, right? We don't really see it unless it's pointed out. All right, so there we go. That's how we could use a repeatable texture. Works really well with this kind of sphere UV. But sometimes we don't get that. Um, so next we can see an example where if we don't have a, um, a seamless texture. So I'm going to go ahead and put this orange into a layer. So I'll select it and then I'll come over here to my layers panel. I'll click here, which will make a new layer and add whatever I've selected into that layer. So that way we can just put this off to the side while we work on our next orange. So to begin, I'll make my orange model. That's what we'll start off with. So I'll right click, make a new material. Um, let's do a blend, just so it's a little shiny. This is an easy enough texturing job that a blend should be fine. If the glare gets in your way while you're texturing, you can always use a Lambert instead, so that way it's flat. But, I don't know, let's make it shiny. All right, so now I'll go ahead and plug into the colors. I'll plug in a file, and then I'll choose one of my oranges. We're going to choose the orange picture. And then if I hit six, I can see my texture. All right, so now we need to UV unwrap this. So I'll select it, go to my UV editor. All right, let me just adjust this. So by default, it has the sphere UVs. Um, and so this doesn't really work with our texture. So basically we want a front and a back. Now, sometimes we go to create automatic and then that projects a I'll go ahead and dim this picture a little bit. Um, that projects a, bo a box map, so it takes so it takes a projection from the top sides, all four sides, and the bottom. So like a box. Now this result is not very friendly to work with for this particular method. So instead what I want to do is basically I just want to be able to project half of it and then the other half. So for this, we can use a planar map, or we can just grab these front faces and just project those. So I'm going to go ahead and hop out into my top view, so that way I can easily just marquee select the entire front of the model. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do a create planar with options. Let's see, I'm going to hop back into my perspective view. Now basically, the way the planar map works is it's going to project it in one axis. So we have to choose that axis. And basically, you want to choose the one that's running through the direction that you're trying to project. So in this case, it would be the Z axis. 
So now, so we can go to edit reset and then that will reset our settings here. So if I choose Z and then apply, apply will keep the window open. Um, I can see what I get. Basically I just get a projection from the front. So I can move this out of the way here and then I can hit Q or W or any of my tools to just end it. Now another option we have here is best plane. Uh, let's go ahead and see that. I'm just going to grab those faces again. Best plane will do whatever it thinks it's best. It'll do it kind of based off of those faces we have selected. So if I were to select some random faces here and I choose best plane apply, you'll see that it does a projection at that angle that it thinks is best. That angle is not a any of these axes. So sometimes that can be a cool way to go. In this case, we'll just do the default options and then I'll do Z axis, apply. You can see that it also does it to where that's up, that's down, whereas the other one might make a different choice. All right, I'll hit W and just move this out of the way. So now I'll do this for the other side. So I can go in and select these faces. Um, as a shortcut, those faces are already all just right here. So I can easily just grab them in my UV editor. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing, a planar map with options. Uh, the Z axis is running through it, apply. Now this one's a little bit different, right? It turns red. Now the reason for that is because the way it's projecting it, it's going to look at it from this angle. This is like the front. And so when it's projecting it, it's actually projecting it this way. So it's projecting through it and it's actually projecting the back side of these faces, which is causing it to come up with a flipped version. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we could leave it like this or we could um, we could always adjust it. Uh, we could always flip it if we wanted to. It's just the red is not bad. It's just letting you know that it's flipped. Okay, I'll go ahead and exit out of that. So now let's take a look with our texture. I'll hit six. So before we add these to our texture here, uh, let's check out the checker pattern. All right, so we'll see that these sides, these faces here are getting skewed uh, kind of intensely and they're never gonna be perfect. You know, this is a 3D object, but UVs are 2D. So there's always gonna be some skewing but this is a little over the top. Um, and the reason for that is if we look at these, these faces are much smaller. And that has to do with how it was projected. When it was projected, it just saw it like this. So it sees, oh, that face is smaller, this face is bigger. So what we'll do is we'll right click, go to UV shell, and then to unfold these, come over here to the unfold section, and we can hit optimize. That's gonna do its best. It's not perfect if I were to look at it with the checker pattern there's still gonna be a little bit of uh, skewing and um, s missed proportions, but there has to be a compromise and that's really not too bad. All right, so I'll go ahead and optimize this one. Sometimes flipped faces are not gonna optimize correctly because basically Maya is trying to flip it and optimize it and it's just too weird for it to figure out. So what we would wanna do is flip this first. So we'll grab our UV shell and then we'll go to modify flip and then now we'll optimize. Alrighty, now that these are optimized we can go ahead and add them to our texture. Okay, let's take a look at that. Now this method does give us a seam running along the middle um, and that's, again, it's just a compromise we have to make. Something we could do, perhaps, is if we were to grab one of these and modify flip, that will at least make them flip along the same uh, area, so that way the seam will just look a little less intense. It's going to give us this kind of Rorschach uh, effect. And if we were to make these match up just a little bit more, that could help align them a bit better. All right, but not bad. That doesn't look too bad. I mean, if it's from far away, we don't really see the seam too much and we can do our best to just kind of uh, keep the seam out of our view. Before we start the third one, let's go ahead and make a duplicate of our second one and then we'll work off of the duplicate. So you can just put this one in a layer or hide it. So for the third orange, 
Uh, what I want to do is kind of just cut this in half so that way it's like an orange slice. It's just half of an orange and then we'll get to see the uh, inside of it. So if I wanted to cut that in half, um, now we might just think about cutting it this way so that way we get the bottom half. Uh, but the way this was UV'd, remember we have the seam going down the middle. So I think it might be easier if we were to take off one of those halves and then just rotate it. So to make this uh, really easy, we could just grab the UV shell for this, which is essentially like grabbing all the faces, and then just delete it. That could be an easy way to do it. But of course you can always just grab the faces. Alright, so let me go back to object mode. And I'm going to go ahead and just rotate this. So now I need to model the this part at the top. So basically I'll go to edge mode here, double click to grab this border edge. I can I'll use my scale tool, hold down shift, and then extrude inwards. If you're using an older version of Maya, you can do shift right click, extrude edge. Um, then if we click this button, then I'll click, and then just scale this inwards. All right, so different ways to do it. So uh, basically what I'll do then is just merge these areas together. So with this border edge selected, still, I can do shift right click and then up here at the top, merge collapse edges, merge edges to center, and that'll just merge them to one single vertice. Okay, looks kind of cool. Not quite what the texture that we want though. Um, basically whenever you extrude, Let's just take a look at these UVs. When we extrude out new faces, they'll just automatically take up the whole 0 to 1 space. Usually we need to go back and recreate the UVs in that case. So, but before we do, let's go ahead and assign a different material and texture to these top faces. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab them. Now of course we could do this in one of our viewports maybe to help us. We could select the front view here and then we could use control to take away and then we're just left with these top faces. Another way we could do this easily is if we go to vertex mode you can grab this middle vertice and then if you do control right click you can convert your selection so we can say two faces, two faces, there we go. All right, so somehow just get those faces selected, and then we're going to assign a different material to those faces. So we'll right click, assign new material. I'll choose a blend since that's what I chose for this part before, so that way they match. Um, now I have a lot of tabs here probably, it's all the way at the right, uh, but I can just go ahead and delete my history. So I'll right click object mode, delete that history, and now I see I have two tabs here. Now this first one I should probably name, so I'm going to go ahead and name this Orange Mat. And then over here we'll call this Inner Orange Mat. Now then we'll plug in to the color channel a file. Whoops, this might show up my Place 2D texture. I'll click here on the File tab. And then I'll search for, there we go, the sliced image. Okay, so still not quite what we want yet. Um, so let's go ahead and select our object and we'll go to our UV editor. This object, um, even though we have two different textures here, and if I go and grab a face from the top, it'll show me this texture. Whereas if I go and grab a face over here, it'll switch to a different texture. It's still gonna show everybody's UVs collapsed on each other. Even though they're using different materials, that's gonna happen. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. Um, if that gets in our way, it may be smarter to separate these faces out, so that way they're separate objects, so that way they're not just all collapsed on top of each other. This is such a simple model, so I think we can live with it. Alright, now what I want to do is grab these faces here, so that way I can reproject their UVs. That's really easy to do. I'll right click, go to face mode, and then I'll just marquee select over the triangles here, which basically just selects all of them. So now we'll go ahead and reproject these. So we could do create planar with options. We'll choose Y since we just want to do it in one direction. Apply. And there we go. I'll close out of here. Um, so we can see how does this look. So we just need to resize it. So we'll just scale it down and just adjust it. 
How's that? Let's check it out in object mode. Not bad. Very quick, very easy. So now we have a sliced orange ready to go.